Hello, everybody, and welcome to our 30-day growth devotional. My name is Robert Vega, and I'm one of the pastors here at the Way Road Outreach. And today we're going to be looking at James 4, 11 through 12 from the New Living Translation. But before we get started, let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you've given us to share your word. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to lead us and guide us and help us to understand and give us revelation and insight of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, before we get into it, yesterday we covered James 4, 7 through 10, where we learned there's victory in submitting to God, drawing near to Him through cleansing and purifying ourselves by the Word and resisting temptation through humble obedience and unconditional surrender to God. Today, we're going to learn about the dangers of being critical and judgmental as James gives us a stern warning about the improper use of our tongue and our attitude. Apparently, people have had this tendency from the beginning of time, and it's something that we still have to pay attention to and become aware of today. So let's read in James 4, 11 and 12. He says, Don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. But your job is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. God alone who gave the law is the judge, and He alone has the power to save or to destroy. So what right do you have to judge your neighbor? Oh yeah, this is going to be a good one. So let's start off in James 4.11. He says, don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. And again, like we said all week, James is speaking to the brethren, to the church. And to speak evil means to slander someone or to make a false statement about someone. It means to injure them to defame them, or to destroy the reputation of an individual. Now, James is not saying that we're not to confront our brothers and sisters when they fall into sin, because the Bible tells us in Galatians 6.1, Dear brothers and sisters, if, a, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path and be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself and begin talking about them also we have to be careful we have to watch what's coming out of our mouth we get more instruction from titus 3 10 and 11 when he says if people are causing divisions among you give a first and second warning and after that have nothing more to do with them we have to leave them over to god but again don't start talking about them and judging them about what they're capable of and what they're incapable of for people like that it says in the bible have turned away from the truth and their own sins condemn them they don't need us to condemn them anymore or to talk about them. James here strongly urges us not to speak evil of anybody. Why? Because it reflects badly upon the Christian faith and our witness as a child of God when we don't live in peace with each other. See, what James does is he's, he's condemning careless words, derogatory remarks, critical words, slanderous accusations against each other. In the book of Ephesians uh, 4.31 Paul reminds us, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, and harsh words and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Bitterness is the main cause why anybody would feel the need to even talk bad about anybody. And, and so we see that when we speak evil against each other, we will now begin to stir up God's anger against us. The Bible said that Marion and Aaron began to speak against Moses because the woman that he had married uh, because of the woman he had married, and this angered the Lord, even to the point where Marion caught leprosy, and the Lord called all three of them out, and he said, in Numbers 12, 8, and 9, he said, Why were you not afraid to criticize my servant Moses? He says, The Lord was very angry with them, and he departed. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I don't need careless words to cause me, cause the Lord to depart from me. I need the Lord every day of my life. I need Him helping me to watch what I say, watch what I think, watch how I react and respond. And this is one thing that should ring in our minds uh, when the next time you feel the need to, to gossip or say something bad about somebody. Remember, this was the Lord's uh, attitude. Why were you not afraid to criticize my servant? 
I thought about that, and that's ringing in my mind every time because it's a tendency, and, th- and these are bad habits that we have to talk about people. But James gives us a stern warning in the second part of James 4.11 when he says, he says, if you criticize and judge others, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. To criticize and judge is a form of slandering, and a slanderer puts himself above the law and he acts as though he knows better than the commandments or the principles of God's law, and in doing so makes himself a judge of the law rather than a doer of the law. And anyone who does this is motivated by pride and arrogance, and they begin acting as though they have the authority of God in passing judgment on others, and by doing this they are rejecting God's royal law that says you are to love your neighbor as you love yourself. The moment you start talking evil about somebody, you are definitely not showing no more love to them. The Bible would remind us also that our only obligation as a child of God is to love one another. And not only, not only that, they, they then replace this with their own law or perspective by which they justify their actions and therefore feel they are justified to criticize, judge, and speak evil of others. Wow. We have to be careful how we think and how we react and how we respond. In James 4.11, he goes on to say, but your job is to obey the law, not judge whether it applies to you or not. So when it comes to the commandments or obedience to God's law, we're not to ask why. We are told to obey. Who, 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 we, who are we to think that this doesn't apply to me? And I can conduct myself in this manner. This clearly violates God's law, royal law that says that we are to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Remember, all, what, what he's saying here is, is that this isn't love when we begin to speak evil of others. Now, let's do a spiritual checkup. When you walk into a crowd, do you slander yourself by criticizing and judging yourself in a condescending manner? No, you don't. And do you speak badly about the mistakes you've been making? No, you don't. You know why? Because it's not in our nature to speak evil of ourselves. So if we're not going to speak evil of ourselves, why would we speak evil of our brothers and sisters in Christ? So if you're speaking evil against God's people, your actions, your very actions are defaming you and ruining your witness and you will begin to lose influence with people that you are supposed to be leading. Jesus has this to say about those who are judging and criticizing. He said this in Matthew 7, 5. He said, you hypocrite, get the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. You know what he's saying? Don't focus on other people's shortcomings or or character defects. We have enough of our own problems that we need to worry about. And we need to worry about the log that's in our eye before we start worrying about everyone else's problems. So for us believers who are forgiven only by God's grace and then try to make ourselves arrogant judges of other people's sin is an extreme form of hypocrisy. We have to be careful in the things we say and do. In James 4.12, he says, God alone who gave the law is the judge, and he alone has the power to save or to destroy. So James makes it clear that God is the only lawgiver and the only judge. He is the only one who who is able to save or to destroy. And he ends in James 4.12 by saying, so what right do you have to judge your neighbor? Wow. That's, a, that's, that's something that we need to remember in our minds and in our hearts the next time we feel like speaking evil against people. What right do we have to judge our neighbor? This is a strong warning and wake-up call. If you've been wondering why things might not be going right in your life, maybe it's because God's, as God's children, we should not be speaking evil of others by judging and criticizing them based on our own judgment. That would be showing an extreme amount of arrogance and pride that is still in our hearts. So I hope you've enjoyed diving into James chapter 4, 11, and 12 with me today. As you can see, this passage provides us with some incredibly important foundational truths for our faith, for our prosperity, and for our blessings. And I know this caused me to do an inventory of my own life and repent. It changed my life, and I hope it changes yours too. So before, you, before we go, I would like to encourage you to take a moment to comment on this video with anything that you've learned or found helpful and definitely share it with anyone and everyone you can. Tomorrow our study on the book of James will continue with James 5 verses 1 through 4. So let's, let's pray before we go. Father, we repent and renounce for being critical and judgmental of others. Forgive us, Lord, for speaking evil of others 
and help us to become aware of what's coming out of our mouth and help us to love others the way we love ourselves. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you so much. God bless.